Thanks for staying with us. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuarid Lagwaja, has expressed the need for every citizen to get involved in the security of lives and per properties in the country and not leave it only to the security agencies. Lagwaja said this while delivering a lecture organized by the Center for Peace and Strategic Studies, University of Illorin. He said, in a country of over 200 million people, it is unrealistic for security operatives totaling around 2 million, including an army of just over 100,000 active personnel without a reserve force to secure the entire population. The chief of army staff said that the federal government was committed to recruitment of more hands in the army as promised, stressing that the Nigerian army, along with other security agencies, is under-resourced. Our guest this morning is Mr. Okechuku Nwanguma, Executive Director, Rule of Law and Accountability Center, RULAC. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning and I'm happy to be here again. Okay, let's explain the statement of the Chief of Army Staff. 200 million people and he's saying even if the, uh, the security agencies have 2 million, it will not be adequate. Yeah, I think that the Chief of Army Staff spoke basically in terms of ratio. That is um, uh, personnel, um, personnel um, manpower and the population of the country. But, but, uh, but uh, yes, well, that's, that is true, but the issue goes beyond just numbers. Um, when you talk about security not being the business of the military alone, what is the level of community relations, community trust, and uh, there are also human rights concerns. All of these alienate the people. Um, but there are also issues of inadequate uh, resources, budget constraints, equipment shortage. There's even issues of corruption, mismanagement of uh, security funds. There's a patronage system in terms of appointment of, uh, you know, um, appointment and, and promotion of personnel, which also affects morale, training deficiencies, insufficient training. I talked about morale and motivation. Many, many young officers are retiring prematurely, and many others are, are deserting because of the welfare condition within the military. And not, not, not many, the, the times are over when young people want to enroll in the army. I have had the military complain that young people are no longer enrolling. So it is as result of the high level of casualties. You hear military officers say they are being sent on a suicide mission because the bandits, the terrorists, they are sent to um, combat are even better equipped than they are. Their welfare condition is, is zero. I've talked about community relations and distrust and issues of human rights uh, violations which alienate people. Um, our borders are porous. Uh, so that these bandits are able to move across easily without being, uh, you know, you know, you know, detected. It, 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 uh, the communities are not being engaged. It's of, without community engagement, yeah, and then also addressing the root causes of insecurity. You continue to kill bandits, and many young people will continue to be recruited because the conditions enable, you know, re recruitment, and uh, you know, and then you talk talk about. Adaptability. The, these insurgents are able to adapt quickly to military tactics, and the military is whereas the military are using conventional tactics, these people are using asymmetrical, what they call guerrilla tactics. Then the, the geography, the accessibility of the, the terrain, and all that. So there are a lot of constraints that um, affect the ability of the military to combat insecurity. It is not just about n n n numbers, you know, but these and several other 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 factors so where do we start from because the this the plethora of of problems that you have mentioned there, there are so many where do we start from to uh, address this issue yeah it's basically to address these issues once you identify the issues you, you then begin to you know uh, put in place strategies to uh, uh, address them for example for example yes we talk about insufficient funding but the resources we have heard about um funds being mismanaged and nobody is held to account we have heard about you know insufficient equipment what are we what is the government doing to adequately equip the, the our security and but more importantly social economic factors the drivers of insecurity and crime people the level of poverty unemployment education is 
cup is zero. So people are, are too hungry and too frustrated that the next option is to resort to, to, to crime. Look at the north, where insurgency is even more rampant. You see, the politicians in the north have mismanaged all the resources that they get monthly and entirely regenerated. Education, young people are not being educated, they are majority system. These people are easy, you know, targets for recruit, recruitment, unless we address this. In the Southeast, for example, the strategy being used to respond to, to, to grievances, some of this is as a result of grievances, rather than address those grievances, engage communities and try to understand what the issues are. They reuse military practice, which does not solve the problem. So it is to, once you identify the problem, you're going to good governance is a key factor good, good governance so the the energy that they deploy to trying to you know um, um repress people who are asking for good governance can be used to 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 think about how to make nigeria work but the budget of uh, security or budget for security every year has been really really humongous and i don't know so we cannot say if you ask me, I, I cannot say that it is because of underfunding, uh, because the budget has always been very, very big. And I still don't uh, find a situation where uh, uh, security is getting better. Some say it's because the security agencies themselves are complicit in this. What answer do you have to that? It, it, it is not in doubt. It is not in doubt. Um, issue of corruption has been up there but not addressed you you know about the case of the senior military officer who was uh, a, a accused of uh, you know uh, stealing certain billions of military funds and, and we didn't we didn't get to hear what happened the consequences for for that so when government gives and uh, allocate funds the the national assembly uh, uh, you know budget funds make financial uh, 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 you know budgetary allocations what Measures are, are put in place to also, you know, um, monitor and track the the use, the management of, of, of these funds. So when people are giving funds and they mismanage them and you don't bring them to account, the chances are that they will continue to to, to steal money. So that is a question, a gap in terms of accountability and transparency in the management of of, of security funding. If people are not brought to account, if, if nobody is fired for mismanagement of funds, then it will continue to happen. So ultimately, it goes back to leadership, political le leadership, that is, that is itself corrupt. Hmm. So where do we go from here? It's, it's because if it goes back to leadership and the leadership you're saying is corrupt, both political and even within the, uh, the military, the police and every other one, I don't even know where we're going. And then uh, some people are being fingered in this as being complicit person, persons, not even institutions now. And then uh, there's nothing we are doing about it. It seems as if everybody can just get away with everything. In fact, a very small but unconnected and even unconnected case uh, just happened now. A private has been dismissed because she cried out and said that uh, she was being molested and all that. And so yes. Uh, yes. another person might just see this as well and say, okay, no, we are not being protected and let me resign. So if the That's youths right. are not going to, uh, for recruitment, then what is the way forward? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, when a person commits an inf infraction within, within an institution and the institution covers up that person or fails to uh, bring that person to account. It means that it is institutionally, you know, it is institutionally um, uh, um, authorized. If, if, and I hear the, the, the young military uh, female officer say, make public the report of your, your investigations and let us see how you were able to find this man, you know, innocent of the allegation of sexual harassment and molest um, uh, uh, and molestation. So whereas individuals do these things, it becomes institutional because when the institution, there are no institutional measures to address these things adequately and satisfactorily in order to create deterrence. It means that it's an institutionally, you know, sanctions, um, um, you know, you know, misbehavior. So it, it goes back to institution. So, uh, so what I think really is that 
that there is a governance gap in Nigeria. And look at what happened in Edo State. The brazen rigging of election and the the promise to use that same that same model. They now call it the Edo model to capture. And they look at the, the language they use to capture um, Ondo and Anambra. It tells you the level of impunity that politicians are doing things with impunity because there are no consequences. And because the president, the president himself is benefiting fr from it. Look at all the allegations of mismanagement of, you know, uh, uh, priorities, mismanagement of funds at the presidency. And in spite of public concerns, public, you know, uh, outrage, they keep doing what they're doing. So ultimately, it lies on the people to take back their country. Otherwise, what are, the future looks very bleak. Hmm. Okay, so all the solutions that you've given, what are the, the lowest hanging fruits that we should start with? Let's just, let's just uh, take them uh, as it is. Even if it's the first one or two, where do we start from to address this uh, insecurity? Well, if we, if we are serious about addressing insecurity, the first thing is to address the root cause. Because if you don't address problems from their roots, unemployment, um, poverty, hunger, uh, you, you know, uh, look at the, 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 the there, are, there are very few Nigerians that can afford a, a daily meal, a meal, a, a meal in a day. You go to the market, people can no longer afford anything. So if this, and that, this thing is naturally leading to increase in crime. You, you are walking along the street, you see young people coming to beg. And when they beg, you don't give them. They, they even try to, to rob you because of frustration. They have been pushed to the wall. Government is not responding to these concerns about unemployment, poverty. People can no longer go to work because the cost of transportation. The government has been asked to reverse some of the policies that are creating these, you know, you know, these challenges. You can't continue to increase. Uh, you are increasing the, the the price of petrol. You are increasing the the the. the, the the price of uh, electricity, and yet the electricity is not even, you know, regular. And then every day they keep increasing and increasing. People can't go to market and buy things, and you think insecurity will not increase. So military solution cannot address social, you know, problems created by socioeconomic factors, uh, as I've just as I said. And then commitments by the government to address. Government must be sensitive and responsive to public concerns and i begin to address it if, if it needs reversing some of these policies go back to the table and 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 you know draw a, you know you know draw a plan to to ad address this in such a way that it doesn't hurt the way it is hurting now mm. okay so would you advocate return of fuel subsidy <laughs> I think that I mean it, it, it's it's a whole debate on its own. Um, there is this debate about subsidy is a being a scam, and I think that there is a capital behind this subsidy or this whole subsidy subsidy saga that government does not have the political will to tackle. Who are those benefiting from, you know, fuel subsidy scam? Government is not willing to tackle them, and this talks about some people in government. Benefiting from, you know, the, the, the scam around it, having, uh, you know, um, refineries outside of this country that they, they feel more comfortable to export crude and then import fuel. Look at the Dangote issue now. Why don't you support Dangote too? Is repair, repair our refineries. Once we do these things, all this talk about uh, um, um, a subsidy, we, we, you know, we disappear. Hmm. Okay, well... I, I, I do hope we will, we will get to a point where people will start having confidence in our security uh, agencies because you did mention that um, trust is not there anymore. And it goes beyond buying guns. It goes beyond even getting personnel. It goes beyond everything. It, it is most, mostly security is a thing of the people. 
And if the people trust you, yeah. then you can, you can do a lot of things. One person or three people can do a commando work with good intelligence and wipe out a, a horde of bandits if they have the correct intelligence. But you can't get that intelligence when the people are not even ready to offer it because they don't trust you. Absolutely. They don't trust yeah. you. Okay, well, I would like to thank you um, uh, for coming on the program this morning. It was a real pleasure having you discuss some of these issues uh, with us this morning morning. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, we were talking about um, uh, the, the fact that uh, Tuarid Lagbaja has said that um, even with uh, two, or two million uh, security personnel in Nigeria, it cannot be enough uh, to tackle the problems of insecurity. And we'll be talking there with our guests. So we'll, we'll take a short break and when we return, the next thing we'll be looking at ASU and their threat of a fresh strike. <laughs>